There are many reasons to write, expressing, connecting, escaping, but sometimes you're just playing town. Louise Fitzhugh's young adult novel, Harriet the Spy, begins with aspiring writer Harriet trying to show her friend Sport how to do what she calls playing town. She makes up a town, figures out who lives there and what their jobs and relationships and personalities are, and then she starts to make up stuff that happens to them. There's a robbery at the local gas station, and at the same time a baby is being born. Harriet is making something up in her mind and then getting lost in the reality of this thing that is not real. This kind of getting lost in your imagination is one of the most mythologized and misunderstood parts of creative writing. And aside from the fact that I think Harriet the Spy is one of the great books of the 20th century, the reason I wanted to talk about this scene is that I think it is the most amazing insight into the pure pursuit of imagination. Harriet's not talking about doing anything with town. She's not talking about turning it into anything. She's just doing this thing because she likes doing it. And that perfectly dramatizes how all the stuff we do to capture or communicate what we imagine, which is art, is a very different thing from our imagination itself. Imagination is a part of art. It's a source of art. But it is not art. Once you start to craft it for others, you're not playing town anymore. Writing it down for other people and caring what anyone else thinks is a whole other thing. So, a lot of becoming a good writer is learning a practical method for getting comfortable with going back and forth between imagination and art. So let's start looking at that by trying to really define what the imagination is, because we all have one. Some of us don't use it that much. We kind of outsource it to books and movies and things, and writers probably like to use it too much. But either way, this making stuff up in your head is a basic thing that human beings do. We have this weird ability to create a fake reality and then kind of live in the created moment. What are we actually doing when we imagine, and why do we like it so much? In some ways, I think it's a runaway variation on the survival skill of making plans. We figure out the consequences of something we might do by playing out an imaginary future. But it's also kind of like a twisted version of memory, where it's a memory of someone else's experience. So that would kind of make it the source of empathy, the way that we learn to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. But it could also kind of be like some weird mental flight simulator, where we have someone else go through things that we don't feel able to go through. Or do we just use it to escape from reality? which I do not say dismissively, escaping reality is a really important thing to do. Imagination is clearly related to dreams. I mean, another name for this is daydreaming. But Harriet's name for it also points out that it can be a form of play, and yet not a game. You can't win or lose, there's no rules. I personally think it's all of those. I think that all of those very practical brain operations kind of took on a life of their own. And our brains just started saying, I just like doing this. I don't care if it's a life skill. It's just fun. I'm going to keep doing it. The point here is I believe the imagination is not just a tool to do some other thing. It's a basic part of the human mind. And that is really important to know because it means your imagination does not care about your art. So if you're like me and you wanted to be an artist because you're a big imaginer, you're going to get into situations where your art and your imagination are in conflict. Because when you write, you need to imagine, to go into a fantasy world. But then to write something out of that experience, you need to essentially betray 
that world because of the realities of working in a medium or a business or because of community standards or working with other people or also just because what you imagine, the exact sensations and emotions, can never really be captured in the work. If I say purple, you in your mind see a slightly different color with a different impact and meaning. Imagination exists only in your mind and only in the moment. You can't actually save or share your imagination. When you try to do that, you turn it into this other thing, a picture or a story or a script for a movie. And all this conflict between art and imagination can make you feel terribly wrong, like you've messed up. I think it's just the reality of the fact that you really want to do two very different things. And a vital part of being a working artist is to accept that this process, making art from imagination, includes transforming the original impulse into something else. Instead of fighting that reality, you can start to look forward to the process of transforming magical kicks into artsy tricks. You start discovering the things that will actually become the work. And you begin to appreciate that it's kind of a miracle that any of this stuff connects at all. I think that's one of the most profound and exciting things about art. When that clicks, when something moves or inspires or amuses someone else, when somebody gets any of it, no matter how damaged and partial, it's a unique satisfaction. In many ways, that's more rewarding and satisfying than money or attention or praise. So if art and imagination are so substantially different, what does a writer do about that? First, recognize the limits of imagination. You can't actually live there. And it can even get kind of addictive. Also, as noted, it can put you in conflict with your art. And finally, it's finicky and unpredictable. It does not respond well to being organized or having to show up or being directed. So considering all that, why do we even get involved with this thing at all? Because the upsides are really big. Your imagination is a source of strength because no one can take it away or tell it what to do. No one can stop you from using it. And as you know, I think it serves some vital purpose. They say your brain needs to dream at night. I think a lot of us need to imagine when we're awake. Imagination is a part of you. It's not something you sell or do for others. So recognize the independent value of make-believe. Then figure out the place in your creative process for playing town. Try and think about how exactly it's best for you to get your imagination into your art. Know which one you're doing when you're doing it. Be aware when you are going there. Go there to discover and invent and gain creative and emotional power. Just don't expect it to obey the rules or the business. The more you allow your imagination to be what it is, the better it works. Then, if you're going to use your imagination for art, be ready to work with it. It's the gold you can make a piece of jewelry out of if you're willing to melt it and bend it and only use as much as the piece requires. That's really all there is to this video, other than maybe you should read Harriet the Spy, just to give some respect to this weird thing that we do in our heads. Okay, go make something up, and maybe you'll write something. If you like this video, like this video and subscribe to this channel. Leave me comments, ask me questions in the comments section of this video, or go to writingforscreens.com. Reasons to write. Where we learn to... And you... And... And... And you... Put it somewhere else. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Start looking at that by first, by first, not first. No, plan that. Begin wrong. Bah. <laughs> wrong, wrong. That was backwards. Different things 
and I don't like the way I'm talking.